Welcome to Short Waves Lasting Impact. I'm your host, Mark Serber, alongside our resident clinical psychologist here at Impact Wave, uh, Dr. Rachel Cavallero. Uh, Dr. Cav, it's, it's really great to see you again. Unfortunately, once again, we're going to be talking about a really tough topic, which was the um, death by, of uh, Tyree Nichols at the hands of police officers in Memphis. And obviously, there's a million ways to look at it. But can you start off by uh, telling us what lens have you been looking through this particular situation? Yeah, I mean, let's first just acknowledge that this is a tragedy. It's a loss of a human life. And so I think we need to start there. And in the greater context, what I'd like to focus on today is just how do we cope with this? Um, it seems that it's it's one thing after another in the news and the media when it re uh, related to violence, right? Gun violence, whether it's mass shootings or police brutality, it seems to be happening. It feels so frequent. Um, so I want to talk about coping with that and then also kind of switching how we think about it as well, because it's actually not as frequent as it feels like, but it's just so shocking. So let's just start there. And I, I think that's really important to look at this because I kind of think about it in different ways, right? So there's the, this, as you said, it, it's happened so often that it's almost like we're getting desensitized. Mm -hmm. There's the needing to understand the moment, needing to feel it and, and needing to, to cope with it. And then there's the other option, which is going on, on Twitter, one of those places and getting into huge battles about it and letting it take your whole take over your whole life and enrage you. Mm -hmm. And so how do we strike that balance of, first of all, dealing with it, not becoming desensitized to it, but also not dealing with our own personal feelings about it in a way that becomes extremely confrontational or all consuming? Yeah. I mean, the first thing is, of course, just making space and making space in an appropriate manner. So it's not destructive to you or your relationships, right? If you're going out and kind of just drinking to self-medicate or using other substances, that's not helpful. Although, again, it takes away the pain momentarily, but eventually it comes back. And oftentimes when you're under the influence, you do make even worse decisions. So it's about allowing those emotions to be there. Most people don't like emotions. They feel so uncomfortable or painful, right? Especially in this, this case. However, our emotions tell us everything we need to know. I like to think about emotions as data, truly. It is data and they're, they're telling us what we need. Um, when we're so overwhelmed with different emotions and these horrible situations, we don't know where to go, where to turn, but truly, if we can sit with our emotions, it, they really tell us where to go. So one of the more salient emotions here is fear, right? We feel so fearful because of these events that are happening and we may start to withdraw or we may avoid things that we wouldn't have done before, right? And what we actually want to do is of course take reasonable actions, but doing the things that you did before that of course were safe and also reaching out and connecting, right? Especially we have the other emotions, sadness, the loss, loss of a human life in particular, and that certainly ripples through a community, right? And other people who can identify with the victims of these crimes. So it's connecting with other people. It is such a big one, right? That's why we feel so uncomfortable. And when we can listen to our emotions appropriately, we're able to respond in that way, right? We feel that way until we can make that connection. And then it kind of alleviates the, the sadness again and the fear too, once we're able to feel safe again. And then on the anger side, anger is such an empowering emotion. It can be a little dichotomized, right? Where for some people, they channel just all their emotions through anger because it fills you up with energy and it feels sometimes productive, but then sometimes it can get out of control. You also have some, some individuals who really don't like anger and really try to avoid it. And they feel like, oh, if I, if I get angry, like I'm doing something bad, right? So neither of those are ideal approaches. It's about managing the emotion as it comes. And of course, people 
are outraged, reasonably so. What you want to do with that anger and that outrage is take appropriate action. So it, it may not be responding in the moment. If you feel like you're more just reactive, that, that may not be the best course of action. But taking that and recognizing, I want to do something about this. I want to make a difference. So this is where you can get involved in your local community. And this is where your voting comes into play, right? It, it can help you make the right decisions for you and the people around you. So we always want to make space for emotions, honor them, manage them appropriately. The other thing, of course, is to talk to others. Now, you want to be sure that somebody can provide you with support. And, you know, myself and what I recommend for other people is that when you're looking for support, just start with that. Start the conversation with that. Because as people, we like to help each other. And oftentimes helping each other looks like problem solving. So I'm going to give you advice. But when we want support, we don't want advice. So just asking for that up front, hey, I, I'm really bothered by the events that are happening. Like, oh, I saw that video and it, you know, my heart hurts so much from watching that video. Can you just sit here with me? I just, I need to talk about it. I need to process it. And if we could preface the conversation like that, it can really set the stage for a healing space, right? Instead of this back and forth, like advice giving and when you're looking for support and be like, oh, okay, yeah, thanks. But you're not getting that need appropriately met. The two, those are two of the big ones. And as far as like resilience, well-being and responding to these events, it's taking good care of yourself, not letting the things go just because you're so upset or you're feeling hopeless, right? Making sure you're eating three meals a day, trying to get an appropriate amount of sleep continuing to exercise. Our physical health is so important and it really helps our mental health stay far more balanced. We cannot forget to take care of our bodies. So that's where I think it's really important to start. And the big one, which I think warrants a bigger discussion mark is limiting your social media or li limiting your media exposure as a whole. And first of all, I just want to say I love the idea of asking for support up front, because what you're saying is I need support. I don't necessarily need your opinion. I'm not coming to you with this because I want to have a heated debate or to get more riled up. I'm coming to you with this because I need help processing this. And I, I really think asking for that up front helps that person you're going to to understand the role that they need to play. Definitely, it sets the stage, right? And the way our world is right now, things can get very heated very quickly. And it's making sure, like setting the expectations and the limits of the conversation. So we're not going there, right? And if we do, then I think it's, then you're not the person to have the conversation with. And you talked about social media. How have you seen this particular instance been covered differently by the media or, or how have the media gone about covering this unfortunate tragedy in, uh, in Memphis? Well, Mark, I have to say, I do practice what I preach. And so I do limit my media exposure uh, for my own mental health and well-being, right? So it's a, a balance of trying to stay informed with current events. I, I do think that's important to you, but not going down kind of these rabbit holes with any kind of media. And that's because these stories get extra um, emotional toll put on them when other people are posting these videos, they're adding in their opinions. Sometimes they're adding in things that look like facts that actually aren't facts that then become even more outraging to other people. And it just becomes more and more of a story, right? And, and media can often turn things into more entertainment in a way where it's just very emotion provoking. And when we get all wrapped up in those details, we start to lose sight of, you know, the actual event that happened. And it, and it really takes away from uh, honoring the person uh, that this happened to, this horrible tragedy happened to. And right before we came on air to record, we were talking with um, 
Impact Wave Executive Vice President Karen Tamale Cusack, who said, you know, even the members of the media were saying, you know, you can only take so much. And so I think it's it's really important advice to make sure that you're informed, make sure that you you see it and get the facts. But it, again, it's 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 especially hard in a 24-7 news cycle where you're you're just really want more information and you're waiting for it and waiting for it. And it just it becomes kind of a um, kind of like a cone that you go skirting mm -hmm. down. Um, so how can one make sure they're putting limits on their their media consumption and make sure that they're looking at it through an objective lens? Yeah, that, and again, it's very challenging. It's one of those things, it's simple, but it's not easy. So sometimes, it, well, it depends on your subscriptions to different things. Like I've worked with my patients on turning off the notifications for various news channels. Um, like somebody in particular would get an update, their phone would regularly ring. And when they were feeling very overwhelmed by a lot of this negative media from really past events, um, we worked on turning those off. Uh, another thing you can do is just set limits on your your media time, right? So we, we do this with a variety of different things, whether we're working with anxiety and we set limits for just worrying specifically, you can do that with your media time uh, in setting alarms for yourself or reminders, or even just scheduling it. If you're somebody who likes to stick to your schedule, like I am going to check my media um, just the, at these set times a day, or I'm not gonna allow myself to go over X amount of time. And the smaller you can make it truly, the better. And I'm, I don't want to throw out just a, a number to start with because it is going to vary from person to person. Some people are able to put their phones down throughout the day and some people are not. Um, sometimes it's just a way to get through the day and you have your phone kind of at the ready and you're, you're going through whatever it might be. Other people, uh, your job may require that you're on your computer and these stories are kind of popping up. So if you can put some filters on either your computer, your browser, set some time limits for yourself, or even just try to schedule the time. And you can even think about it as like taking a media break. So for the next week, two weeks, maybe a month, try to take a media break for a short amount of time where you only spend, again, a very small amount on there and see if you can do that. In, even better, see how you feel. Because when I was working with folks in inpatient addiction for the first week, they didn't have access to their phone. And even though part of it was really stressful, there was another part where they felt a sense of relief uh, because they didn't have these just constant negative messages coming in. And how do you strike that balance? Because you wanna be a well-informed citizen, you wanna know what's happening, but you also need to take care of yourself. What are maybe some signs where you realize, okay, I have gotten what I need to know. It's time to rein it in a bit, or it's time to ask for help. Mm -hmm. We could break this down into three different factors. So thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, right? So coming back to feelings, like I mentioned before, feelings are data. If you are feeling excessively stressed or anxious or depressed, hopeless, um, or even angry all the time. If you feel that way most of the day, nearly every day for a period of two weeks or more, this is when it's becoming more of a problem and we know that it's gonna start interfering. Now on the behavior side, that's where this may show up. If you are withdrawing, if you're, uh, so if you're a child or a teen and you're not going to school or you're leaving early, or if you're an adult and you're not showing up to work on time or you're leaving early or you're checking out and you're not getting the things done that you normally do, that's a behavioral indicator. Of course, using any sort of substance to kind of cope with that instead of working through it, that's an indicator that you're overwhelmed. And even from a physiological standpoint, if you find yourself exhausted all the time, more than usual, or kind of emotionally numb, kind of shutting down, that's another indicator. Also, if you're avoiding certain places or things, 
just related to these various traumas or gun violence, like, oh, I don't want to go to this place because it reminds me of this video that I saw. That's another indicator that this is really impacting you in um, a way where you probably need a little extra help. And if we look at our thoughts, the primary thoughts associated with trauma when it starts to become more of a problem is that the world is unsafe and I can't cope with it or I'm unable to cope with it. Or even more generalized beliefs about all people are bad or the, you know, the world is a terrible place as a whole. If, you're, if you start thinking that way and it becomes kind of more all-consuming, this is where this is a sign that getting help from a professional or having one of those supportive conversations is really important. Well, Dr. Cavallero, thank you so much. These tragic events are happening way too frequently. It seems like there's one every other day. So I really appreciate your coming on the Impact Wave, um, Short Waves Lasting Impact podcast to give people a kind of a rubric or some understanding as to how to deal with and, and process these events. And I think that's invaluable information. Before we go, is there anything else you'd like to add? Just to acknowledge that, unfortunately, this is another event. And in the last couple of years, we, we really have been inundated with violent events, natural disasters, uh, epidemics, right? So it's really taking a toll on us as a whole. And it's not, it's, it's not abnormal to really need extra support right now because our resources are, are really being stretched very thin, our psychological resources, and it, it just makes sense. So we really need to take care of ourselves. And if you need to, ask for help, it's available. And I'm not the doctor here, but I'm just gonna say and agree with me or disagree with me, um, definitely please let me know if you disagree with me, but make sure that you are taking the time to help yourself because there are so many people who just wanna help others but if you're not helping yourself, you're not going to have the bandwidth to help others in the way that you really can. So I think that understanding these cues and realizing that, and even if you're the one who's so used to helping, saying, hey, I need some help here, that's just going to make it easier for you as you go back to helping everybody else. Definitely. Uh, I like to say, put your oxygen mask on first. You can't save other people if you are incapacitated. I agree with you fully, Mark. Well, Dr. Cav, thank you so much as always. A wonderful, uh, albeit a very a tough and, and sad conversation that we have to have, but really appreciate your time. And I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Uh, if you liked, please uh, like us or subscribe on uh, YouTube or on Spotify or whatever platform you're listening on. And of course, you can carry this conversation on and many other conversations on the Impact Wave app. So go to Impact Wave app in your Apple or Google Play store and download today. Dr. Cav, thank you again. And until next time, for Dr. Cavallero, I'm Mark Serber saying thank you for joining us on the Impact Wave podcast.